Let's sing My Redeemer Lives. Put your hands together.
bit and let's sing Oh the Blood.
Christ is my reward.
the Christ, the Son of a living God. Amen. It's wonderful to be worshiping God in His tangible presence. Amen. His visitation. Amen. Let's pray for our leaders, Pastor Mitchell and uh, Pastor Greg in Prescott, Arizona, preparing for the conference next week. It's going to be streamed online. So if you want the link, you can ask me for that. And we're going to pray for miracles. Uh, all God's people, the uh, uh, laborers throughout the world are going to be ministered to, going to be edified and strengthened, every pastor and wife and convert and disciple and all those attending the conference. And let's also pray for Thursday night, World Evangelism Night, that the money comes in. Amen. And also, especially the, uh, these uh, lives that have been laid down, that they're going to go plant churches in other nations of the earth. Amen. What did Jesus say in Matthew 28? Go into all the world. This brother got it. Amen. And that's what we want to do. We want to be obedient. Pray for Pastor Jesse and uh, Diego Galvan. Let's pray for the East Coast, Paul Campo uh, and uh, his wife. Uh, let's also pray for Chip and his wife, Lori. Let's uh, begin to pray also this evening for the Suspanskis and the Kings in laboring in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And especially my pastor, Keith Sullivan, and Carrie, his wife. As they're laboring in, uh, amen, East Rochester. Let's also pray for the Greece Church to become self-supporting. Uh, let's pray for every chair to be filled. Uh, let's pray for the anointing upon this sermon tonight. That people are helped, saved. Uh, and uh, backsliders are reclaimed at this altar also here in Greece, New York. Let's pray for miracles. Let's contend for the miraculous tonight. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, uh, ask... Uh, uh, a brother David to open us up in prayer and when we subside. Let's pray, church. God, thank you for anointing and power, Lord God, what you want to accomplish, God. Save the lost, God, build work here in Greece, God. Faithful men and women, Lord. God, surrender to your glory, God. Surrender to your will, God. We're asking you, God, for nothing short of a miracle. God, heal those with COVID-19. Everyone that's sick with the coronavirus, God, we pray for America to get back to normal. See right now, we contend for your precious will, your presence in our services, Lord God, on outreach on Saturday throughout the week, God, that we can be a winsome people, God. We can win souls in this time. Be effective for Jesus Christ, God. Meet up and minister to every unspoken request and those online tonight. Lord, we thank you that you always hear us. We thank you that you respond. We thank you that by your spirit you reveal to us what your will is and where you want us to go and what you want us to do. We thank you for what you've done here and what you're going to do. We ask that you prepare us to hear the word tonight. Anoint Paul to preach, anoint us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Oh, it's great to be saved. Hallelujah. Let's take a minute to greet everyone. Make everybody feel comfortable. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry, we forgot a couple prayer requests. Please lift these people up uh, this week. Amen. Um, uh, Mark Flynn Sr. for salvation and uh, illness. Uh, a young man by the name of Nicholas uh, has some operation on his legs. I believe it's for cerebral palsy. Let's pray that uh, he can be healed and quickly recover. And let's pray for Joe, who's receiving cancer treatments. 
And our brother David, hallelujah, you got answered our prayer and bring him back to life. <laughs> you want to say something? What did you say? Um, my, uh, one of our uh, friends uh, is going to have a baby, uh, a baby tomorrow. Is it K Casey? Casey's baby is Okay, going let's tomorrow. pray for Casey and Casey's fiance. Amen. That nothing goes wrong with that and everything is glorious. Ten toes, ten fingers, and a quick delivery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Amen. A uh, few announcements for the local congregation, and uh, we're going to go a little bit faster tonight than usual. Um, this Saturday, we'll be outreaching at 11 o'clock into the local community here to the neighborhoods and tell people about Jesus. At 11 o'clock, we're going to meet at the building. You're welcome to join us. We go out for about an hour to an hour and a half. So be ready. If it's uh, going to be hot and you don't want to dress uh, with your cardigan, amen? Amen. Or your hoodie. So anyways, um, we'll be back on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for our adult Sunday school. 10.30 is our morning worship service and preaching. And then Sunday night, our evening service is at 5.30 for prayer and 6.30 for, amen, the uh, evening service. I'm sorry, did I do it out of order? Did you get rid of it? Can you pull it back up? She wanted me to also announce the, uh, the conference that's starting on Monday night's called The Windows of Heaven. Amen. If you have any questions about it, this is a conference we do twice a year. And uh, we're praying. We've been fasting for miracles. We want to see Jesus lifted higher. And uh, we want to see souls get saved, disciples made, and churches planted eventually. And it all happens here through this conference and what God's doing in Prescott, Arizona. Unfortunately... Uh, there have been travel restrictions and I cannot go and actually it came to the point where they said the uh, governor declared in it's like a state of emergency only 50 people can meet at a time so the conference has been canceled but we will be watching it online uh, we can watch that together if you like <clears throat> excuse me amen, amen. it'll be uh, Monday night and then I'm going to say there's four services every day uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I mean, you don't want to miss it. If you can't make it, uh, you can always look at it at a different time. Amen. Amen? Amen. It'll be glorious. It'll be awesome. Have I missed any announcements? No. Let's find the basket and uh, take up our offering. Larry Ellison building out his Newport Mansion complex. Anybody know who Larry Ellison is? Very rich man. And according to this document here, it says he wasted $11 million on revamping, refurber, re reverberations, and renovating. Uh, around the turn of the century, 20th century, affluent families such as the Vanderbelts, you've heard of that name, yeah. the Astors built lavish summer homes in the cliffs of Newport, Rhode Island. They were synonymous with leisure and wealth until the Great Depression, when many were sold to preservation societies and other nonprofits. Billionaire Larry Ellison, founder of Oracle and owner of 98% of a Hawaiian island, has acquired ownership of four such properties, buying the last at 562 Bellevue Avenue. I think we went there for a marriage retreat, Bellevue Avenue. That's for real, man. And he spent $11 million in past February. But he also spent upward of $100 million renovating the Astros Beachwood Mansion for a museum. <coughs> so I am not going to play the role of a liberal today. I'm not going to tell people what to do with their money. Because it's their money. They've earned it. But in light of scripture, the Bible says that uh, this world is passing away. It's going to be here for a moment and then poof. Like a vapor, it's going to disappear. It's going to be gone. God's going to create a new heavens and a new earth. All that you see, the metal in these chairs is going to rust. The wood in this pulpit here is going to decay. And the clothes on you will be eaten by moths. But the riches that are true, that are in heaven, are yours. Amen. We're going to give together. Let's have our usher come back. Amen. If you can make it. How are you doing? Twelve feet to go. And uh, <laughs> let's give to God. Let's give out of a grateful heart for what he has done for us and the plans he has for us. And eventually understand being ready for him to come back is what it's all about. Let's give with a generous heart. Uh, Sora, can you pray over the offering? 
God, as we give, we usher in, God, your spirit. Yes. We usher in, God, our own gratefulness yes, for what Lord. you've done for us. Bless the gift and giver and all other offerings besides. And the Lord bless you. Thank you for your offering. The uh, online giving is located right here. We have one more. Thank you so much for your giving. We do appreciate it. Whoa. We're going to study chapter 19 today, and a sermon I've entitled, Christ on a White Horse. Now, George Washington was born in 1732, and he died in 1799. He was the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. For some of you who didn't learn that, public school people maybe, uh, and served two terms as the first U.S. president from 1789 to 17. 97, during the American Revolution, he led the colonial forces to victory over the British and became a national hero. Washington's charismatic, excuse me, charismatic presence, moral strength, and political maneuvering kept the Continental Army from rebelling against the weak civilian government and the revolution from degenerating into civil unrest. After the war, Washington was called upon to head the Constitutional Convention. So here we have a, a picture. Some of you have seen the, uh, not the photographs, but the paintings. Uh, and, uh, you know, George Washington had led our country to victory uh, through the different battles. He's riding on his horse. Amen. And I got inspired, amen, to preach this sermon uh, from Revelation 19, 11 through 16. It's called Christ on a White Horse. And some of you may have noticed, but for the past three months, we've been looking into end times doctrine, especially when we see pestilences and, uh, uh, you know, uh, different famines in various places and locusts uh, that are out of control. We know that, uh, you know, some of Timothy's um, words that you find they're written by Paul about uh, the end times we're living in the last days men will be lovers of themselves uh, uh, haughty uh, haters of what is good uh, and so on etc 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 describing America and our generation today so let's uh, jump into our scripture here Revelation 19 verse 11 now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except for himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. 
Amen. Let's pray. God, bring anointing. God, help us to realize the time and the hour, God, in looking forward to justice being served as Jesus returns ultimately and uh, does complete justice. Hallelujah. So our need this evening, hallelujah, is to understand that Jesus is coming back. All that we see is only temporary, like I was talking about in the offering. The things that are eternal cannot be seen. So we read in scripture prophetically that none can stand before him. Scripture is in reference to the end of the great tribulation. This is after, you know, the, the bowls are poured out on the earth. The one world leader has been governing for seven years and it's been a horrible time. You've had to take the mark uh, either on your forehead or your hand. Uh, uh, the number of the beast, 666. Uh, unless you did, you couldn't buy or sell. It's been a terrible seven years. Seven years of bad luck, we could say. So we find ourselves at the end of that, actually, when Jesus returns. Scripture here shows us that one day the heavens will be opened and we can clearly see. And John is saying, now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And this is not the white horse of the Antichrist as he deceives the nations because he is a counterfeit. We don't understand that. This would be incredible to see. And there's a song on Caleb and it talks about Tearing back, opening the curtains of heaven. If we could see that. The Antichrist is portrayed early as riding a white horse. Let there be no confusion. He's an imposter. And everyone will fall for him as Christ. But they are entirely deceived. Mark 11. We can read about Jesus. At the end of his ministry, he's riding into Jerusalem on the foal of a donkey. That's a baby donkey. And he's bringing peace to Jerusalem. He was stretching out his hand to offer them peace. Unlike that, Jesus, we now find Jesus in Revelation 19. He's riding a white horse and he's waging war to finish off the Antichrist and the false prophet. And all of those who dis disobey God and rebel against the truth. So we have a completely different picture here when you compare the two together. The writer's identity is obviously Jesus. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. We learn this in Hebrews 2 verse 17, uh, that uh, for this reason he had to be made like them, Jesus, made a little bit uh, you know, lower, amen, fully human, in every way, in order that you might become a merciful and faithful high priest. He's faithful in service to God that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Jesus is faithful. And then we can read in John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The writer's identity is absolutely Jesus. And Christian obedience, secondly, is our need to follow Jesus completely. Not half-heartedly, not when we feel like it, not when, you know, everything's going good and successful, but all the time. It may be the hardest decision of your life, but it's worth it. It's the most rewarding. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Yeah. Living for God is everything. The power revealed in every Christian heart is one of obeying God. And that is obedience to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When God is drawing people to repentance and he wants to save them, but they're going to have to repent and change their ways and surrender to God. Obedience leads to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. To receiving that joy that comes along with salvation and uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit with you know, the evidence of speaking in tongues and comfort and boldness, amen, and power. Obedience brings the Holy Spirit fruit in the believer's lifestyle and life choices. Amen. 
the saints who accompany Jesus on white horses as they follow him to make war. They are following Jesus. They're still following Jesus. And they're dressed in fine linen. That's being righteous or holy or pure. And verse 14 teaches, And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Amen. Obedience. Secondly, let's uh, switch gears here and look at the promise. Because God is righteous. He's going to put an end to suffering. He's going to make judgment against all those who uh, destroy or who work wickedly and cause other people to suffer. He judges. And all wickedness must be destroyed. You can read on your own time, Job 36, 6. He does not preserve the life of the wicked. He gives justice to the oppressed. We're talking about the righteous nature of God. He's holy. Amen. Completely righteous. And he will judge the wicked. What an injustice it would be to not reward the righteous and uh, let uh, sin win. How ungodly would that be? That's not the character of God. You have been serving God. You've been uh, sacrificing. You've been serving Jesus all your life now. And uh, uh, just think about that. Amen. Wouldn't be fair, would it? That's not the God that we serve. He will judge those who disobey him and are disobedient. He is a righteous judge. Many of you don't like to hear that. A lot of you like to hear Jesus Man, he was cool. He had long hair on his back, man, and a beard. He said, hey, man, what does that concern me, his mother Mary? You know, he used the word man. But he wasn't really a hippie. A lot of you are, who are listening, maybe online or maybe even here, you may be atheists or secular humanists. You love the teaching of Jesus uh, in the Beatitude when he was hanging out and, uh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of God. But many don't realize the righteous character of God. That God is not a pacifist. God makes war against sin. Amen. Look at the parable of the, of the wicked vine dressers in Matthew 5. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do with those vine dressers? They said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and leave his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him in the fruit of their seasons. Amen. 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge will give to me on that day. And not only me, but all those who have loved his appearing. Hallelujah. Praise God. He makes war secondly. Amen. Peace comes at a price. And he makes war. So Jesus is depicted. I went through all this. You know, Chris Christopherson. You know, blue eyes. Uh, carrying a little lamb on his shoulder. You know, you know Jesus is so nice. Oh, he's depicted as kind of a wimp, if you ask me. Other times you'll see him. And he's, uh, he's, he's hanging on the cross and he's, he looks pretty pathetic because uh, he's just been beaten and he, there's no power in him. He's defeated. This is not the God that we serve, my friend. This is not the Lord of Lords. In the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, Joshua is there about ready to go into Jericho. And Joshua encounters a... Captain of the host of the Lord. Some people say this is a pre-incarnation of Christ. And he says, who are you? No, I say to you, 
uh, put off your shoes, your sandals from here, for the place which you stand is holy. I am the commander of the uh, whole armor of God, the whole army, the army of the Lord. He's a commander. He's not a wuss or a, a wimp or anything like this. He is there and meant to do battle. And uh, we need to understand today, and you're living here in the sound of my voice, where you're on uh, a YouTube, we are in a spiritual war, my friend. War is being waged right now for believers. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand uh, against the wiles of the devil, the deception of the devil, the tricks, the snares that he lays for you, the deception, the false doctrines, and the heresies and every lie that our culture propagates. We have to stand against those. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood like people, but against principalities and uh, powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual armies of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We're in a spiritual warfare now. 2 Corinthians 10, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. I lost my place. Sorry about that. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not counted, but they're mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, we're warring against hell, my friend. We need God desperately. Jesus said, behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Amen. When he was kicked out of heaven, the worthless rebel. Man, he is here now and he is warring against the saints with all his demons at his bidding. We need to be ready to war with Jesus against evil and against demons and against the devil. Can anybody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Praise God. We're winding down here. Amen. How about a little bit of water? Amen. You ready for the blessing? Yeah. Yes. Praise God. I just set all that up to say this. That he rules. God's in control. If you care to read the end of the book, amen, you'll see that Jesus is triumphant and we will win. So reading the scriptures, I want you to think with me about the blood that he shed on the cross. The blood indicates he is righteous and he is fitting. His perfect blood sacrifice makes him worthy of all praise of all honor. There came a time in heaven and then where they were looking to um, open up the scrolls and they're looking around. No one was worthy of that. Revelation 5, John writes, I wept. And I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seals. Amen. Jesus is worthy because of his blood sacrifice. He didn't have to come out of heaven. He came willingly to suffer and uh, die in your behalf, to bleed. Uh, he bled. Uh, he was beaten beyond uh, uh, recognition, the Bible teaches. And his face was like hamburger. And they, uh, they whipped him with the cat of nine tails till the flesh ripped off the, the bones in his back. Amen. And he suffered for you. And he is worthy. And he is righteous. And it is fitting. Amen. To let him do what he wants to do. And that is to uh, you know, kick the devil. Kick him in the butt, man. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him. You and I overcome the devil. By the blood of the Lamb. That's your only hope, my friend. You can read all the self-help books. You can go to uh, classes, uh, courses on miracles from 1976. 
You can conjure up your imaginary powers and your witchcraft and sorcery and divination. You have no power over sin. He's a, a deceiver, amen. He has got you uh, in, in control and you have no power over him. You will have power over the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. That is the way that you're living now, the way that you're surrendered to God, the convictions that you're making as you're growing up as a Christian, as you're living for God, as you're making choices. Am I going to do that? Am I going to talk this way? Am I going to think like that? What am I going to watch on the internet? Amen. And it says they loved not their lives unto the death. Hallelujah. Jesus' blood makes him righteous. He rules in righteousness. When you and I let God rule in our hearts, amen, we will experience with great wisdom the joy that he's planned for us. Amen. Self-rule always, always leads to deception and disappointment and evil and sorrow. But when you are submitted to the Spirit of God, you can enjoy a spiritual dominion here. And you'll see how Jesus rules with a rod of iron. It's not a flexible thing. It's not like a piece of plastic or a you know, piece of balsa wood or something that's, you know, like this. It's it's rod. It's like it's kind of like this thing is unbendable. I can't really bend this microphone stand at all. And he rules so uh, uh, with an unbending nature. There will be no bending the rules in this time because God will not let it, people get away with things. Right now he's winking his eye. He's like letting people do what they want to do. But there's going to come a day when th there's going to be no opportunity to do evil and to uh, fight against him and to disobey because it will be very strict in this time. Strong leadership has always proved to be able to protect the weak ones. And with Jesus in charge, there will be no unrighteous people leading. Amen. Because why? He's the king of kings. A king in his place to govern his subject and to promote unity among the people. Amen. This is what a king does. He's the king of all kings. Thirdly, he's the Lord of lords. When we surrender our lives and we make him Lord, amen, he can do what he needs to do. Some of you... Uh, and said, Lord, Lord, and uh, you'll be deceived because Jesus says that, that uh, on that day that you'll be crying, Lord, Lord, and he'll be like, I don't remember you. I didn't have a relationship. What is your name again? What church did you go to? I can't, I never heard of it. And uh, you need a relationship with God. They say, well, we were in the streets with you. We saw the miracles that you did. I never knew you. Depart from me. Man, he's a Lord. You're going to call him Lord. That means you're calling him master. That you're going to be submitted to him. And surrendered to him. He's not master in the sense of a wicked slave owner. But in the spiritual authority in our lives. Jesus said many in that day will cry Lord, Lord. I That'll be shocking to many religious people who are going to just be blindsided. They'll be like, wow, I guess I missed it. Fourthly, I want you to think with me about how eternal heaven is. There's going to be no ending there. His righteous reign, Christ, amen, is going to be righteously reigning for eternity. Heaven and earth will be destroyed. Amen. Amen. Revelation uh, 21. Let's look further at Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem that's going to be descending out of heaven. Revelation 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like most precious stones, glittering and glowing, luminescent, beautiful, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Revelation 21, 22. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need for sun or moon or light, for in it the glory of the Lord illuminated. 
the entire city. The Lamb is its light. Amen. And lastly, there will be no more tears or sorrow in heaven. Amen. Jesus will wipe away all your tears and remove all your sorrow. Amen. You will live uh, forever in bliss and worshiping God. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more mourning. No more sickness. No more disease. No more crying. No more pain. For the order of things has passed away. Amen. Christ on a white horse. He's coming to do business. Amen. There is a war that's going to be going on. There's a war going on now also. And if we'll fight, we will find ourselves on God's side. We will find ourselves raptured on that day when we hear the sound of a trump, the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet Jesus in the air. It's called the harpozo. That's the Greek word for snatching away or snatching up. That's what God wants to do for every believer here because you are living in the end times and then we will be prepared for that. And we will also, uh, the saints will return with Christ on a white horse and then to strike the nations. Amen. And to set up the millennial room. Let's go ahead and close our eyes if we can and bow our heads. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Amen. That you are able to join us and join us online also. And God is here. God is uh, not willing that any should perish. But he desires that all men should be saved. All men should be born again. And I want to plead with you, knowing the terror of the Lord, that you should get saved tonight not saved amen Jesus as I spoke before about his blood that he is worthy he is the only one that's worthy because his blood that was shed was not in vain it was for your soul's salvation a conversion meaning that you'll have all your sins washed away by his blood you can become whole and holy and wholesome and God will do a miracle in your life. You need to be born again, my friend. You need to surrender to God and experience a new life. The Bible says, old things will pass away. All things will become new. You can put your trust in Jesus. And then you're not saved. And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you're not saved... I want you to slip up your hand that you want to pray with me and get your life together. Get it right with God. God sees that hand. Amen. Or perhaps maybe you were on fire for God at one time. You were a saint of God. You were born again, but you have let it slip away and you have chosen to go a different path. Maybe you're just trying to figure things out. Or you're living in sin. You're disobedient to God. Maybe the pressures of life, the trials that you went through, did, you know, caused you to just give up on God. Temptations maybe to go sin. I don't know. But you're backslidden. You're out of the will of God. And this is not to embarrass anybody, but I'm going to ask you, if you're online listening, or maybe you're here in the congregation, and you're backslidden, you want to come back to Christ. You want to get your life uh, back in his care. Amen. Is there one out there that, uh, uh, that would like to pray? We want to pray with you. Amen. With an uplifted hand, I want to ask you to give me a sign that you want to pray. God is dealing with you. God loves you. He died for you. Amen. You know, let's change the order of our service. Christ on a white horse. Amen. He is victorious. Amen. And uh, even now we are fighting against spiritual wickedness and the false doctrines and every lie and every thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. We have to fight. We have to be waging a war. We have to be uh, standing and, uh, you know, dressed in the armor of God. We need to fight and be ready for Christ. And I'm going to encourage you to come forward if you need prayer.
uh, and you need uh, God to touch you and give you further revelation that he is coming back and a white horse. Let's sing this song with our brother. You're welcome to come forward and pray. Saturday 11 for outreach. Mark Flank, can you close us as we go? Lord, I want to uh, thank everyone here that has come here. I want to thank everyone in the Christian following. I want to thank all the mother and father churches and all the daughter and son churches. Please, 
Uh, Jesus, hear our praise and let all those who have done all so much for this community and all those who have done so much in their communities be blessed and be praised and anointed and in God's name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Love one another as you go. Make everybody feel comfortable.